Collecting extraordinary and mysterious objects is something that humans have always done. Roman Emperor Augustus reportedly had his houses embellished not only with statues and pictures, but also with objects which were curious by reason of their age and rarity, like the huge remains of monstrous beasts which had been discovered on the island of Capri, called giant's bones or hero's weapons. Collections like these would feature items like exceptional natural gem and mineral specimens, and some less natural things like unicorn horns. Collections like these would come to be known as cabinets of curiosity, and were a way for the wealthy elite to show off the finest items in their collections. Today, we're gonna take a look at some of the most famous collections, and examine how they eventually led to the world's first museums. The word cabinet wasn't originally a piece of furniture as it means today. In Old French, it meant a small house or a hut, and came to mean a private room in the houses and palaces of early modern Europeans, serving as like a study or a retreat. The cabinet was usually located adjacent to the bedchamber and would be furnished with books and works of art. The first cabinets cropped up in the 16th century. In fact, the earliest illustration of a natural history cabinet was in 1599 called Ferrante Imperator dell'Historia Naturale. Throughout the Renaissance, collecting precious objects became a hobby of the ruling class, functioning as status symbols among these elite. No two cabinets were quite the same. They were a reflection of the owner's tastes habits, and personality. As owners began to amass more and more objects, shelf space ran out and collections began to take over entire rooms. Someone needed to find order in all of this chaos. Guides and manuals instructing collectors on proper preservation and display techniques began to appear in the second half of the 16th century. The first known manual was published in 1565 and defined the ideal Wunderkammer as having five main sections. One for precious artworks, or artificialia, a second one for rare natural objects, naturalia, a third for scientific instruments, scientifica, a fourth for objects from exotic lands, exotica, and finally a fifth one for natural marvels that sparked wonder, mirabilia. One of history's most famous collectors, Olaus Wormius, also known as Ol' Worm, was a Danish physician, natural historian, and antiquary from the 17th century with quite a collection of curiosities. It ranged from artifacts collected from the New World to taxidermy to fossils and man-made objects, all of which came with some grand tale. A book published after his death called Museum Wormanium contained detailed descriptions of his cabinet and is divided into four sections. The first three deal with minerals, plants, and animals, and the fourth detailed archaeological and ethnographic items. Some collectors were particularly fond of elaborate cabinets with many drawers and secret compartments. These cabinets themselves could be part of the curiosity room, or they could stand on their own, representing in miniature format the diversity of items found in an entire cabinet. Cabinet makers of the time specialized in producing these furniture pieces and delivered them fully furnished with a mini collection that might include hundreds of items. An example of a large notable Kunstkammer is the Dresden Green Vault. It has some claim to be the oldest museum in the world and it's the largest treasure collection in Europe. Today, it's separated into two collections, the historic Green Vault and the new Green Vault. The historic vault has nine themed rooms and one entrance room. There's an amber room, a silver room, an ivory room, and even a coat of arms room. The Hall of Treasure is the largest room, and it's fully mirrored and has vessels made from colored gems and amber and artwork made of pure rock crystal. Then there's the Jewel Chamber, which holds the crown jewels of Saxon-Polish royalty. It also holds one of the most important statues in the whole collection, more with an emerald cluster. It's a two-foot statue of a man adorned with gold and jewels holding a tortoise shell tray with a massive emerald cluster on it. The cluster itself came from Colombia and was a gift from Emperor Rudolf in 1581 and was described as a miracle of nature. Augustus the Strong had the statue built just to display the cluster. Also in this room is the Obeliscus Augustalis. It's over seven feet tall and features 240 stones and figures bought directly from the workshop of Johann Melchior Dinglinger, the goldsmith who created the Moor with Emerald Cluster statue. The obelisk was designed to be a kind of indoor monument dedicated to Augustus the Strong, which is obvious when you notice that in it are carved famous people from classic antiquity venerating Augustus the Strong, perched at the top of the obelisk as a brilliant, infallible leader. And you thought Kanye had an ego. And that's only the historic vault. The new vault on the second floor has 12 rooms. 
Some are dedicated to particular artists like Dinglinger. There's a room for micro carvings like the cherry pit with over a hundred faces carved onto it. There's a room for enamel art and a room for rock crystal art. One notable piece in this vault is the ivory frigate supported by Neptune. It's a giant ship made of ivory held up in a dramatic balancing act by the god of the sea. The sails are ivory, and even the 50 crew members are all made of ivory. There's also the golden coffee service, a gleaming pyramid of cups, saucers, and everything else you would need to serve the most luxurious cup of coffee ever sipped. Augustus took this dinglinger zinger with him for Christmas with the rest of the nobles of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth back in 1701. But dinglinger's favorite is Diana bathing, and it's my favorite as well. It depicts the goddess of the hunt, Diana, carved out of ivory, seated at the edge of a chalcedony bowl held up by a pair of stag antlers. Oh yeah, and the bath is being filled by two dolphins. It tells the classic Roman myth of when Diana turned a hunter into a deer to have him ravaged by his own hunting dogs just for stumbling upon her bathing. I'm not sure what the moral of the story is, but just look at that filigree. So tell me guys, if you had a cabinet of curiosities, what gem or mineral specimen would you put in it? Maybe you've already got one of your own. Let me know down in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on other historical episodes like this one. Thanks for watching.